Hi, in this tutorial we're going to study the henderson hasselbalch equation and then we will look at an example where we will determine the overall charge of a tripeptide at a given pH. The henderson hasselbalch equation is as shown here, so it relates the pH of a solution to the pKa of a specific functional group plus log of A- minus over HA, which is the concentration of deprotonated over protonated forms of a molecule. The henderson hasselbalch equation is derived from the acid dissociation constant. Let's consider a general acid HA. When HA is added to water, it will dissociate into H plus and A minus. And if we want to determine the acid dissociation constant Ka, we will get equation 1, where Ka equals products over reactants. And if we rearrange equation 1 to get the concentration of hydrogen ions, we will get equation 2. We know that the pH of a solution is equal to negative log of concentration of hydrogen ions. So if we rearrange equation 2 to get something related to the pH or equation 3, and if we uh, simplify the equations, we get equation 6, which is the henderson hasselbalch equation. Amino acids have three functional groups that could contribute to their overall charge. These are the alpha amino group, the alpha carboxyl group, and the side chain or the R group. Uh, the charge contribution from the side chains depends on the identity of the amino acids. So if the amino acids have ionizable side chains, uh, these amino acids will have three uh, functional groups that will contribute to their overall charge. There are seven out of the 20 amino acids that have ionizable side chains. These amino acids are two negatively charged amino acids, aspartic acid and glutamic acid, three positively charged amino acids, arginine, histidine, and lysine, and two polar uncharged amino acids, cysteine and tyrosine. So that gives us 13 amino acids out of the 20 that do not have ionizable side chains. For, for these amino acids, the charge contribution only comes from the alpha amino group and the alpha carboxyl group, and not from the side chains. At physiological pH, or pH 7.4, these amino acids are known as dipolar ions or zwitter ions because they have both positively charged and negatively charged groups, give the, giving them an a charge of zero. So the pH of the solution affects the charge of amino acids or peptides. So when we increase the pH from um, when we increase or decrease the pH from 7.4, it will affect the overall charge of the molecules. So when we solve problems, we have to keep um, these rules in mind. The first one is if the pH of the solution is one unit um, smaller than the pKa, that means there are more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions then the group is going to be protonated. If the pH of the solution is one unit higher than the pKa, there are more hydroxide ions than uh, hydrogen ions, and the group is going to be deprotonated because it's going to donate its protons to the solution. And if the pH of the solution is within one unit of the pKa, we have to use the henderson hasselbalch equation to solve the problem. Let's do an example question. So the question is, what is the overall charge of the tripeptide alanine, phenylalanine, and aspartic acid at a pH of 1.3? In this tutorial, I will show you how to solve this problem in a simplified way. For my next video, I will show you how to draw the complete structure of a peptide at a given pH. So the first thing we have to do is we have to draw the peptide in a simplified form and at a pH of 7.4. So here is how I would represent this uh, peptide. We have the N terminus of the peptide. At pH 7.4, the N terminus is positively charged because it is protonated. Uh, the first amino acid, alanine, and the side chain R. The second amino acid, phenylalanine, and the side chain R. The third amino acid, aspartic acid, and the side chain has a carboxyl functional group and the C-terminus of the peptide. The C-terminus is negatively charged at pH 7.4 because it is deprotonated. The next thing we have to do is we have to identify the number of groups that contribute to the overall charge. So the N-terminus contributes to the overall charge. The two amino acids, alanine and phenylalanine, do not have ionizable side chains, and therefore they do not contribute to the overall charge. Aspartic acid has an ionizable uh, functional group, so it's going to contribute to the overall charge. 
and the C-terminus carboxyl group contributes to the overall charge. If we look at the pKa table, the pKa for the alpha amino group of alanine is 9.69. The pH of our solution is 1.3. Since, uh, since the pH is smaller than the pKa, this amino group will stay as protonated. Therefore, the charge on this group is going to be plus 1. The side chains of alanine and phenylalanine don't contain ionizable functional groups, so the charge contribution from these amino acids is 0. If we look at the pKa table, the pKa for the side chain carboxyl group of aspartic acid is 3.86. Since the pH of the solution is smaller than the pKa, this group will be protonated and it is neutral and the charge contribution from this group is 0. If we look at the pKa table again, the pKa for the alpha carboxyl group of aspartic acid is 2.09. Since the pH and the pKa are within one unit, we have to use the henderson hasselbalch equation to solve this problem. So the pH is 1.3, the pKa is 2.09, and here is a henderson hasselbalch equation. And if we substitute the numbers into the equation, and if we simplify the equation, we will get 0.16 for the fraction of deprotonated over protonated forms of the acid. So that means for every one protonated forms of the acid, there is 0.16 deprotonated forms of the acid, which means that the acid or the carboxyl group uh, mostly exists in the protonated form or COOH. So this group is neutral and the charge contribution from this group is um, zero. So the overall charge of the tripeptide is plus one. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. In my next video, I will, um, I will do a tutorial on how to draw the complete structure of a peptide at a given pH. Uh, so stay tuned for more biochemistry videos. And don't forget to write me a comment if you have any questions or any comments. And please subscribe to my channel. All right, see you next time.